Welcome to our lecture online. Another type of nebula, which is much more rare than all the other ones we've talked about so far, are the supernova remnants, the nebula that's left over after there was a supernova explosion. Now, especially the explosions that are known as the type 2 supernova explosions that leave a neutron star typically at the center of these explosions, like in the Crab Nebula, the radiation from those neutron stars, also known as pulsars, light up the, the nebulas to an amazing amount so that they can be extremely bright and luminous like the Crab Nebula ha has, or like the Crab Nebula is. So let's read a little bit about what these things are. So supernova remnant is the result of a supernova explosion. That's hence the name, supernova remnant. And it leaves a very large and fast-growing nebula. So that's the difference. They're much larger than planetary nebulas, and they also expand much faster than planetary nebulas because it's as a result of a, a supernova explosion. So a massive amount of energy is released, and it pushes the layers of the star, the outer layers of the star, out with enormous velocity at thousands of kilometers per second. So it turns out that we have taken pictures of the Crab Nebula some years apart, I believe one like in 1960, one like in 1974, 14 years apart, and you can really visibly see the difference of the size of the Crab Nebula. And then trying to work that backwards, it turns out that you can see that the explosion happened roughly about a thousand years ago, which is true that in 1054 AD, that was, we saw that massive explosion, which was so bright we could actually see it during the daytime even though the explosion happened about 6,000 light years away from here. Now here, that's what we're talking about, the Crab Nebula, which was seen in 1054 AD. Astronomers in the Middle East, astronomers in China actually have writings depicting the event because it was seen even, it was so bright you could even see it during the daytime. And then we have some hieroglyphics on the rocks, I believe it's in New Mexico, in the, in the southern desert in the United States, where we know that people that lived there saw the event and actually made the depiction of it in hieroglyphics on the rocks in the desert. So nebula contain more gas than the planetary nebula. So these supernova, supernova remnants, of course, are the result of supermassive stars that typically have 10, 15 times the mass of the sun. So the amount of material that send out is far greater than the amount of material when a typical star dies that has roughly the mass of the sun or even smaller than the mass of the sun. The gas expands at much higher velocities, typically thousands of kilometers per second, and they have a much shorter lifetime than typical nebula, not necessarily the planetary nebula, but the typical nebula because, again, the gas expands at very, very fast rates. As the gas expands, it is farther and farther away from the remnant at the center that's illuminating the gas. Of course, that illumination becomes less and less intense, and as the nebulas continue to move away for thousands of years, after 10, 20, 30,000 30, years, there's not a lot left of the nebula to be seen. Some famous nebulas that we know of are what the last two supernovas that occurred in our galaxy was back in, that was seen in 1572 and in 1604, which leave those two remnants. They're known as the Tycho and the Kepler supernova remnants. Also, we have the Vela remnant, which was from an explosion that was about 11,000 years ago, and that was seen at the distance of 2,300 light years. Well, yeah, it was about 2,300 light years away. We have the Cassiopeia A remnant, which was from about 11,000 years ago, uh, 11,000 light years away. I don't have the time on that one, but it was about 11,000 light years away. We have the Cygnus loop, which happened about 8,000 years ago. At least we saw the light from 8,000 years ago at a distance of 1,500 light years. And then we realized that there's about one every 100 or 400 years. So we have a supernova explosion in our galaxy about once every 100 to once every 400 years. Why does it enormous range? Well, there could be some happening on the other side of the galaxy, which there's no way we're going to see it because we don't see the remnants of those. And so we don't really know. We try to calculate it based on the number of stars that exist in our galaxy that are of the type of the right size and type that will result in a supernova explosion. And then we try to figure out based upon that, based upon how long they live, how long they stay on the main sequence, how long they stay as a red giant, how long it will be before they will explode. So that's why there's a range there from about 100 to 400 years. Now, since the last one occurred in 1604, 
We're definitely due for another supernova explosion in our galaxy, which would be quite an event, because now we have all this modern telescopic equipment and modern equipment to view and record the event. So we're really hoping for another one nearby, not too far away, so we can, uh, we can watch it and see what happens. We're going to learn a lot. Of course, the last big, big one that we saw nearby was in the Large Magellanic Cloud in 1987. We, we actually uh, recorded the event. It was an amazing event, but that was at a distance of 160,000 light years. We really would like to see one much, much closer in the range of perhaps a few thousand light years, or even closer than that. That would be quite something. That event would definitely be so bright that it would, the, the sky at night would be almost bright enough to reach a newspaper with, uh, with the light coming from a from an event if it was close enough. So we're eagerly awaiting another supernova explosion, hopefully in the next so many years. And then we'll have another supernova remnant in our backyard. Who reads newspapers these days? Who reads newspapers these days? That's true. Well, maybe newspapers online. <laughs> but then you don't need the light because you, you have the screen. That's true. <laughs> So do they exist everywhere in the galaxy? Yes, not in the solar system, but in the galaxy, yes. You would assume that they're everywhere in the galaxy, except we only see the ones that are close enough for us to see them. So I'm sure there's probably hundreds of these throughout the galaxy, we just can't see them. So are they mostly in the disk, not in the halo? So are they in the disk versus the halo? That's a, that's a good question. They would be mostly in the disk for the reason is that's where you find the vast majority of the stars. Since they're such rare events, you'd have to go where the stars are and the mass, vast majority of the stars are in the disk where these large stars are forming that could result in these supernova explosions. But they don't have to be in the disk for this to happen. Do they have to be in the disk? They could be anywhere. But again, you want to be where stars are forming. And since in the central bulge of the galaxy, star formation is basically dead, you're not going to look for them there. You're going to look for them in the spiral arms where you have the high density regions where new stars are forming. So the one to 400 years, are those the ones they see or did they actually um, calculate it with the ones they couldn't see and just calculate it to be problem approximation? So are these part of the ones that we can see or are these part of the ones that are in the entire galaxy? So this would be for the entire galaxy. Now, Yes, if it's our bad luck and it happens on the very other side of the galaxy, 60, 70,000 light years away, it's not going to be as exciting and then it's closer by. So this is indeed the estimate every 100 to 400 years in our entire galaxy. And they're so bright that if it's in our galaxy, we're going to see it. We see these things billions of light years away in other galaxies. So they're so bright that they can be seen across billions of light years of space. So when you say there was one in 1987? Yes. Ah, so since one happened in 1987, but it didn't happen in our galaxy, it happened in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is another galaxy. So our galaxy did not have one in 1987. The last one in our galaxy was in 1604. So we need to demand for another one. Why do they call it Kepler? Because why do they call it Kepler? Well, that's because uh, Kepler is the one who recorded and saw it. That's why they call it the Kepler, but other people found it as well. He was just very famous. That's Same why they named it. Tycho? Same with the Tycho, yeah. I'm sure other people observed it, but Kepler did observe it. Tycho did observe it, among other people, but they just named it after them because they were famous people. So they didn't name it themselves? No, they did not name it themselves. They did, they did not name it after themselves. You're not, supposed to, <laughs> you're not supposed to. Other people named it after them. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, it's correct. People are vain. <laughs> All right. So you must admit, that's a beautiful nebula. It's gorgeous.